Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach, and today we have with us Mark Triplett and Troy Westendorf with the Triplett Westendorf Financial Group. Guys, welcome to the program. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having us. Hey, so I'm looking forward to connecting with you, learning with you, um, your perspectives of financial uh, strategies. And I know it just is such a broad topic, but before we get into that, give us a little bit of background on yourselves and then what led you to start a financial uh, focused uh, group? <laughs> That's a good question. I, I started Mike back in uh, 2002, and this is Troy. It's uh wasn't planned. Uh, my uncle had done this for several years with Prudential, which uh, is a pretty large company. Uh, but he got me involved in 2002. I worked with Prudential for about five years. Met my good friend Mark here. Uh, and then I went on my own for, well, I've been on my own since. So about 2007 uh, till now, I've been on my own and, and enjoying this business. Uh, like I said, it's not something I planned to do. Uh, but it's something I ended up doing. I always wanted to help people, and this has just been a great uh, business to be in to help others uh, achieve things that they would like to achieve in life. You know, I, um, I, I find that when I speak to people like a chiropractor or like a um, you know, dentist, they will have a story maybe growing up where they were in a you know, situation health-wise that no one could figure out the solution, you know, and this chiropractor finally saved the day, so that made me want to be a chiropractor. So there, it's interesting that you brought that up, Troy, because there's you know, the familial and your, your uh, in, uh, exposure to the financial services world was, was part of that. And then let's not just look at it like, I want to build my empire. No, I want to help people. And as we all know, boy, finances are such a massive impact, positively or negatively, in someone's financial picture. Absolutely, yeah. It it can definitely be a a benefit, and it can definitely be one of those hard conversations of, hey, we got to make some changes. So it's not the easiest all the times, but it's definitely nice to get a plan follow a family through a process and just give them some relief and comfort of knowing where they're going and have a plan in place to get them there. And it takes a lot of the stress away out of a situation. They don't have to stress about if they're going to run out of money, uh, what's going to happen to the finances. Uh, we have it all in place and we can just follow the plan. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting that I think a lot of people um, – would relate to that statement. What, you, your your last phrase there, follow the plan, to me just kind of makes me feel like, okay, yeah, show me the way. I can follow the plan. Just help me clarify it, right? Um, and and uh, just as a personal example, one of my, my kids just graduated college in May and then got a graduate assistantship at a school for a graduate school and, you know, full ride everything. And it, she made this comment, this is for the fall. She said, you know, now I feel like I I know right where I'm going for the next, you know, two years. I'm doing this. And I think that when you sit down with the couple and you help them and guide them making the plan, you don't force it upon them and say, here's what it is, you know, like it or not. You're guiding them. When they come away from that type of meeting with this plan, don't you find that they even tell you verbally, it just feels so good to know where I stand and where we're headed. Absolutely. We see it all the time. It's that uh, almost like a sigh of relief. You know, yeah. a lot of a lot of times we see clients that think they're going to run out of finances, go through the plan and realize they actually have enough finances to do the things that they've wanted to do. Just, and they haven't done them because they're worried about running out of dollars. Yeah, because you just don't know what's around the corner. You know, financially, um, you know, the stock market goes up, down, the rates on CDs or whatever financial instruments go up or down. So people feel like, wow, I've come through some tougher times in decades past. We don't know what the future brings. So, you know, big question mark, what's it going to take to retire? Am I going to outlive my money? So when you're working with a couple, um, do you have some type of models or financial software that you can help, you know, show them visually where it's, they are right now, where they want to be, and then kind of that path forward? We absolutely do. We have a retirement analyzer program, and 
Mark and I say this all the time, if someone can do this on a, on a pad of paper, <laughs> it's almost impossible now when you get the Social Security in there, you get the rates of return, the different investments. Uh, there's just a lot of things that are playing into this, maybe a pension. Uh, it, it's just impossible to do it if you're going to do it effectively on, on a notepad with just a pen and a paper. So we absolutely, we have some great programs we use that can really narrow it down and we can do a lot of adjustments in there. Um, just don't know how you could do it without one of these programs. Well, and, and I'm, I'm confident that this program is not available online for anyone just to go download, but even so, it, it, it takes your um, expertise and your experience to be able to guide the process of what you're putting into the software and then how to analyze it and then what to do with the results. And uh, like you said, there could be um, some life situations that you would advise a client and say, you know, you just mentioned this. Maybe we ought to factor that into our you know plan here. So it's not just data entry, hit enter, see you later, goodbye. It's a, it's, it's a nice, wonderful tool, but it helps keep things from falling through the cracks, but you're relying on your um, guidance for them to achieve that goal that they want to hit in their retirement. Absolutely. It comes down to questions, comes down to that initial meeting of, you know, let's get to know each other. Uh, we, we rarely talk products, you know, we're two, three meetings in before we even discuss a product. We're yeah. looking to see what is it about you guys, discover what they have, and that's part of our planning process. That first step is a discovery. We get to know them, they get to know us, and then you start asking those detailed questions. You know, you asked about the, the retirement planning. One of the big things is taxes, and a lot of times we don't even get to that point. So. It's, it's nice to have a program that will tell us the detailed information once we have a conversation and get the questions answered that we need answered and get to know each other. Uh, it makes it for a really smooth transition into this program. It, exactly. And, you know, it's kind of like the old saying, you need to begin with the end in mind. So. What do you envision your retirement looking like financially, personally, all of these things? And then let's work backwards. Where are you now? And then what's the gap? So here's the gap. Here's what we feel like you need to do, step one, step two. Um, and I know you touched on this before, but I want to shift into the importance of how Social Security factors in to making some of those decisions. Um, and I feel like some people just um, think it's just, well, I you know, click a button on the Social Security website and say, sign me up for benefits because I'm whatever age. And I know a lot more goes into that. So speak a little bit about how that plays into an overall retirement planning strategy. Well, there are thousands of rules that govern Social Security, hundreds of ways to claim. And then when you start coordinating that with your outside retirement resources, such as pension, if you're fortunate enough to have one, or IRAs, 401ks, other IOUs, the IRS, or after-tax savings, um, and maybe an individual brokerage account, and you start trying to coordinate how your claiming strategy is going to interact with these other resources that you have for retirement, it can get extremely complicated. And then you throw on top of that, if you're married, or if you were married for 10 years and now, you, uh, and, and now you're divorced, um, or if you're widowed, I mean, all of these things have to be considered before you can ever make an irrevocable claiming decision on how to claim your Social Security benefits. So it, it's not nearly as easy as what many folks might uh, believe it to be initially. Um, and, and we hear that over and over again uh, from folks who come to our live classes to learn about Social Security and tax strategy workshops or the folks that go through our process. Um, they realize quickly that retiring isn't as easy as you know, hitting snooze on the alarm clock the day after they, they're no longer going to work anymore. There, there's a lot of complicated um, actions that have to be taken before you get to that stage. You know, you said a word that you really glossed over, but it stuck in my mind, and I want to touch on it here to go a little bit deeper, irrevocable. This is not a decision that you can click one day and change the next and, and change again, you know, two, two years later at your whim and fancy claiming decisions are irrevocable? You're making a rest of your lifetime decision when you wow. file for Social Security benefits. Wow. That's, um, and, that's and scary. A can, yeah, well, and a mistake can result in, e easily mm -hmm. uh, result in tens of thousands of dollars in lost 
cumulative, cumulative social security benefits. And from a couple's perspective, sometimes it can be um, exceeding over $100,000 in cumulative lifetime benefits that could be forfeited easily by making uh, a decision that, uh, that is not in their best interest. And and I feel that so many people these days with the age of technology um, at our at our fingertips is this wonderful tool called the Internet. So many times people feel like, oh, I can re- research this or figure this out. But that lifetime irrevocable aspect of your claiming decisions, I feel like should be uh, giving people pause to want to get some guidance on that. So makes me think of another question. Um, are there different types of social security benefits, or is it just social security, here it is, when do you want to take it? That's a great question, Mike. I mean, there there are the retirement benefits that most of us think about. That's represented on your green and white statement that you get from social security, that estimate that shows up every now and then, um, or you can go on to ssa.gov and, and download a copy of, of it for yourself. That those are Those are benefits based on your own worker record. But you also have spousal benefits and survivor benefits. Hmm. And really a great strategy makes use of all three types of Social Security benefits. You know, I I think that, and and obviously, survivor benefits would mean one of the spouses are no longer around. So that's going to be on a case-by-case basis. But um, that's kind of the feeling that I got is it's not just a simple, here is Social Security when do you want to take it? And speaking of that, I know that a big um, uh, question mark in people's mind is, should I take it at this age or that age or wait this long, much longer? Talk a little bit about some of the high level um, uh, considerations for when to claim. Yeah, so that's that's the magic magic question there, Mike. It's uh, when to claim, and that's why when we have clients and we do these uh, initial discoveries as I was talking about. We get the statements uh, and then we put them in a system that we have here. Mark will do the adjustments with it and it tells us the maximum claiming strategies. Uh, so if it's a single person, if it's a couple person, it, it, you know, if it's a married couple, it makes a big difference on when to claim. A lot of times they're thinking of, you know, what's, what's best for me? And it's not necessarily what's best for me, it's what's best for us as a couple. When are the optimal claiming strategies and when do we get the most, I guess, bang for the buck, you could call it, uh, but what is the optimal time for each one of us to claim? Yeah, that's, um, and, and here's a question too. It makes me think of this. There is no one cookie cutter right or wrong answer on when to claim. And here's where I'm going with that. I'm sure that if you waited longer, you're going to get more without even putting dollars on that or ages to that. It stands to reason. But is that the best choice all the time? Probably not. So aren't there circumstances where claiming early is a necessity? And then sometimes if you can um, financially afford it, waiting a certain period of time would be better for you. But there's going to be like that seesaw. It's going to be some some cases in some couples or individuals. It's going to be better for them one way or the other. And it's not just, oh, I understand this. Now it's always this answer. So every individual or every couple is going to have an earliest claiming option where they, they, well, that, where that individual or as a couple, they could each claim at the very earliest option that's available to them. Or they have a, a most delayed strategy where both of them could wait to the maximum opportunity to delay Social Security and then trigger benefits. But typically, the optimal strategy is somewhere in between. And it comes down to how to coordinate it with their lifestyle and their other retirement resources, such as the the things we went over earlier, IRAs, 401Ks, or IOUs, the IRS, pension income, if they're fortunate to have it. I mean, all of these other, when we think of retirement resources, we think of an umbrella. And uh, under that umbrella, you have retirement income sources, which would be pension, if you're fortunate to have one, your Social Security benefits, maybe even rental income, things like that from rental properties. Those are all income sources coming into the household. Then you have retirement assets, and those are the accounts that you own, your 401ks, IRAs, et cetera. And, and you have to, 
coordinating all of those uh, with your Social Security benefits will lead to an optimal strategy, which is usually somewhere between the earliest option and the most delayed strategy. And for every family, it's different. Yeah. When I hear coordinating all of those, it, it makes me think, you know, my, your, your mind just goes to so many options and variables. And then st- stuck in the back of my mind is that irrevocable. And you're like, and, and it's kind of like when you're playing chess and you make a move and you leave your finger on, it's like, I don't want to take my finger off yet. I want to make sure this is the right move. Well, you don't want to make an irrevocable decision because what if, what if, what if? So it, it makes me think too that, you know, I think people could go, well, I could just find that out online, but, oh, this is a lot of uh, d- uh, decisions. I'm just going to call the Social Security Administration. They know it all. Or I'm going to go to their website. I'm sure they have a tool. What is the uh, advice you would have on on just accessing what is available through the .gov? So their their website is great. Social Security or SSA.gov is really great. It has a lot of wonderful information. It's updated on an annual basis. And it will tell you a lot of facts and figures about Social Security. And the folks at Social Security Administration are great people, and they're going to do the best job they can to help you get the highest benefit you're entitled to the day you walk into the Social Security Administration office or the day you, you, you go to file with them online. What they're not able to do is coordinate your Social Security claiming strategy with your outside resources or help you coordinate or, or give advice rather on how to claim um, to optimize Social Security benefits for your household. They're not permitted to do so. So it's really a matter of perspective. If you think you know, from a perspective of the Social Security Administration employee, they're going to do the best job they can to get Mike Saunders the highest benefit he's entitled to the day he walks into the office. And they're going to do the best job they can to do that. From the perspective of a, of a financial planner, it is how do I get Mike Saunders and his household the highest benefits cumulatively that they can throughout retirement by coordinating it with the other retirement resources and and um, really trying to optimize that for their household, not just necessarily what are you entitled to that particular day. So it's a total, uh, totally just a matter of perspective. And unfortunately, the Social Security Administration employees are not allowed to give advice or coordinate with outside uh, outside resources. Yeah, that makes total sense. And you know, it seems like in my mind, from learning from you in this conversation. People could have the Google approach of let's go on and learn on our own, the DIY approach. They could go to Social Security and get some good information, but it won't be, you know, the optimal for their situation. And then they could go, well, I hear you um, guys, but um, so good. I'm going to go to a financial professional. But isn't it true that some or many financial professionals have wonderful experience with wealth management or investment management, but maybe not as much specific laser-focused experience when it comes to the impact of Social Security elections? Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. <laughs> um, I would say Mark and I, the, the, the clients that we see or, or the uh, discoveries we do, a lot of folks that haven't went to the in-depth stage that we do on Social Security. Uh, and I'll be honest, a lot, of, a lot of the advice that they get on Social Security comes from the water cooler. You yeah. know, my buddy is doing it at 62, I'm doing it at 62. Here's why he's doing it, that's why I'm doing it. Uh, so that's the strategy, which is a little scary, and the spouse usually never comes into the conversation. But absolutely, yeah, we see it all the time. Um, and that's why we, we take the approach of, and you'll hear that even at our seminars is Social Security is a big part of our retirement planning. Well, and, and I've never I've never analyzed the, the data in terms of how many people come to our classes that already have a financial advisor. Um, I know it's pretty high. I know a lot of the folks that do yeah. attend our classes have somebody that they've worked with, whether they bought investments from a commission broker or they bought some insurance policies from an insurance professional who's who's masquerading as a financial professional, or they're actually working with an investment advisor or wealth manager who is is, specializing in wealth accumulation and giving them advice from a financial perspective. But they're there for a reason. They're coming to our class because this is not being discussed um, by their current financial professional or their CPA or anybody else. So they're coming and seeking 
this information um, at our classes. And that tells me that, that it's, it's wildly underserved, unfortunately. And uh, many financial professionals are afraid to discuss this topic because they're not experts in it. Um, we weren't when we started. We're really, really good at it now, but we weren't when we began. But we had, um, we had this great resource behind us, a, a team that we could call and we still call from, from time to time, um, Monday through Friday, that can answer questions for us when we get stumped. And many of those employees of that, of that firm that we can go and, and, and consult uh, actually work for Social Security Administration and know the, the, what's called the POMS manual. That's the operating procedure manual for Social Security. They know that forwards and backwards. So we have a, a great team behind us that we can go to if we ever get stumped on a particular situation. So yeah, we, take a, we take a team approach at our firm. Uh, Troy and I cannot be experts in everything. So we've surrounded ourselves with tax planning professionals and estate planning professionals and folks that handle property and casualty for our clients and Medicare and health insurance. And in this case, Social Security, we've got a great team behind us that we can call upon um, in a situation where we need to you know, take it to a, a higher level, and they're fantastic. You know, it makes me think in how you described that, which was just really clear and concise from the medical uh, industry, <clears throat> you can go to a general practitioner and get wonderful care. But if you have a very specific gastrointestinal issue, maybe you need to go to a specialist. And that specialist is more um, knowledgeable about that. But even then, they might need to reach out to someone and hypothetically, let's say that they reached out to the Mayo Clinic and at any drop of a hat, they can call up and get a representative. As a patient, you would feel like, okay, I'm going to a specialist and they've got even more specialists at their beck and call, that makes me feel good. They're not going to miss anything. So, you know, what you just described is, you know, you guys go with the, based on your experience and your focus on Social Security, you go a lot further with knowing the specifics of what some options would be to guide them. You've got wonderful tools and technology. You care about the clients by having a very detailed discovery session before you make any sort of recommendations. And if there are specific things that you need to get clarified, you've got a team of very highly trained Trained, so security trained experts that you can get on the line um, immediately to answer questions regarding that case. Does that kind of wrap up, uh, wrap it up with a bow with, from what I'm hearing you say? That's, that's pretty tight, Mike. That's pretty tight. That's, that's, how, that's how we operate. And the reality is um, programs that we use allow us to stress test different actions that we might recommend before we actually recommend them. So you know, we, we, can, we can take all of these recommended actions that we might think of and put them together and see if, they, if one, one action might cause a problem somewhere else in the plan that we were um, unintending to happen, you know, some unintended consequence. And we can stress test all of those actions working together until we, we, we refine a strategy where they're all working in concert to move us towards the direction the the client has specifically said they want to go. And, and that's, um, it's not a fast process. It's not, you know, quick and dirty. It, it's a, it's a, uh, it takes time. It takes uh, a lot of attention to detail. But in the end, um, that's the only way we feel comfortable proceeding. And then everything that we do, you know, we we're talking about this, everything that we do has to be maintained. Um, we, this is not a crock pot. We don't set it, forget it, walk away. Um, everything we're talking about has to be monitored on a pretty regular basis, and we make adjustments as necessary. And I always tell, tell folks that um, are engaging with us that uh, there's a highway out here that runs past our office, and uh, through town it has different names, but out in the country it's Highway 69. It's an old highway. runs north and south through the country. It goes right through Iowa. And Highway 69 has plenty of cracks and crevices and, and patches and, uh, and the bumps in the road. But if you have your hands on 10 and 2 and your eyes down the highway, um, nobody in the back seat will ever notice because you're making tiny adjustments and you're keeping the, the, the vehicle you know, flying down the highway at, at, at speed and everybody's safe and, and doesn't know any, any different. But if you take your hands off the wheel and you turn around and you talk to the, the folks in the back seat, for five seconds, and then turn around. 
your car is going to be veering off the road and you're going to have to jerk the wheel to get back on track and everybody in the car is going to know there's a problem. And that's the difference between routine maintenance on a regular basis versus maybe waiting to visit with a financial professional for five or ten years in between <laughs> in between sittings. And we just you can't do that when you're doing this type of, of detailed, um, detailed planning. It has to be maintained on a regular basis so that you can make the adjustments um, and avoid having to make uh, uh, you know, corrective actions that are really going to disrupt your lifestyle. Yeah, because those corrective actions might mean dipping into other retirement assets that you don't really want to because they need to work the way they need to work. So really good point there. And I want to wrap up with this last question because you used a really interesting term stress test. <clears throat> and I love that concept because it's um, it reminds me of if this, then that. So if you run a scenario for a, a, a client and you say, okay, well, what if we did it this way? The software, am I correct in thinking that the software then just poof, gives this variable and goes, oh, okay, that's what would happen if we did this. And then if we did it another way, then boop, here's what would happen here. And so you're able to, at a moment's notice, be, uh, craft the best scenario because the software is giving you these variables that are cascading domino effect of if you make this one move here or you add this one variable, look at what could happen, positive or negative. Yeah, that's exactly right, Mike. It's stress tests in that, in that way. We can make adjustments. Uh, someone may want to purchase a second home. Someone may want to pay off something early. We can go in and make these tiny adjustments and come back and say, hey, go for it. Or, you know what? This is what it's going to do to your plan. We may want to take it from here rather than here. You know, so there's a lot of different options that we can look at. And what's nice is once we have it in there, uh, we can stress test against all this stuff, and we always tell our clients, you know, we're your financial first responders. Your house is burning down, call 911. Yep. If it comes to your finances, call us, because that's yeah. why we have this, a stress test. We can, we can tell them where to take the dollars if they need dollars, what it's going to do to the plan. Maybe they decide to buy the house. Maybe they say, you know what, maybe it's not going to be in my best interest at this time. So stress test is a big deal, and, and we encourage our clients, no matter the issue, no matter what it is, no matter the purchase, uh, give us a call. Let us stress test it and see what it's going to do to the plan. Yeah, Mike Saunders is our client, and he says, gosh, I, you know, my wife really wants to remodel the kitchen. And you're like, great, <laughs> let's see what happens. You know, it, how much are you planning on remodeling? He says, well, it's $15,000 is the estimate we got. Okay, fantastic. Let's put it in the program and see what that does to the rest of your plan if you do that now. And then we can determine where, where should you pull the money from? Yep. Should you pull it from savings? Should you pull it from an after-tax brokerage account? Are you over uh, the, the, the age at which you can pull it from a retirement plan and not be penalized? And if you do that, is it going to push you in a higher tax bracket? And what's that going to do to your effective tax rate? I mean, all these things have to be decided before you, you know, pull the trigger. And, uh, and that's, that's really why we go to the link up front to – get all of the data in as closely as we can. We tell every client that we work with, even every prospective client that we work with, because they haven't even become a client yet during that, that, that process we go through, once we have all the data inputted to the best of our ability, we think it's as tight as possible, it's still going to be inaccurate because rates of return will vary, your tax rates will change over time, and your lifestyle, like, I, that's one thing I can guarantee is your lifestyle will change throughout those years, and it's so critical to make adjustments along the way. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming on today. This has been really enlightening to learn about some of these variables and just your approach to working with clients, the discovery, the care that you have for them, uh, the tools and, and uh, uh, technologies that you have. And before I um, get information on how people can reach out to you, we just want to make sure listeners uh, realize that Mark Triplett is an investment advisor representative of an advisory services offered through Royal Fund Management, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Advisor. Nothing contained in this interview should be considered as an offer to buy or sell securities. Different investments have different risks associated with them, and not all investments are appropriate for all investors. So, Mark um, and Troy, thank you for coming on. And what is the best way that someone could reach out, connect with you, and learn a little bit more about the Triplet Westendorf Financial Group? All right, Mike. Uh, the best way to reach out to us is just go to our website, uh, www.my 
pt5.com. That's my P as in purpose, T as in timeline. Uh, you'll see our tagline on there. Purpose and timeline is a big deal for us. Uh, but that's the best way to reach us. They can get information about us, check us out. If it looks good to them and they're, and they're interested in having a visit with us, uh, all of our contact information is on there, and they can reach out to our office, and uh, Brianna will get them set up. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Hey, thanks, Mike. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.